Hello everyone. Today I'm going to work at, with some text. We're going to do some text processing and in the end we're going to make a word cloud out of some of the text processing we did. Now there are a lot of different pieces of software that you could use out there for processing text. I think Python might be a better environment to doing this, uh, for doing this. In general there's some specialized software packages for this kind of thing too. But the truth is if you know how to do it in R then you can fold text processing into any other kind of work you're doing into one environment. You don't have to relearn things or spend a lot of money. So I think knowing some of these things is, is a good idea in R. So I'm going to go over some of this functionality today. The first thing I want to do is install a couple of packages. R curl will be using that to pull data off a website. And the other one is Word Cloud, which is the package we need for running the to making the actual word cloud so so if you've not already installed these packages install them and then open up the libraries now the first thing I want to do is download data the trick here with R curl is, is if you put a URL to a file that's up on a website somewhere so this here is my website and I've got a file up there called hockey.csv it's a, it's a common delimited file I put that URL into this it's a, as an argument in this get URL function which is part of our curl if, if I run this and I assign the data to this name here and then I use this data frame read.csv function as it's written here I can pull the data directly off the internet onto my computer and that could be handy for a lot of reasons it can be it saves a little bit of time it also allows you to, to work from data that that might be shared multiple people can pull it down Without, alter, without altering it. So it's kind of good for instructional purposes. So now I've got these data. This is a file of hockey statistics from 1990. All the guys playing in the NHL, all the famous players of that era, none of which play hockey anymore, professionally anyway. So you got the Wayne Gretzky, Brett Hall, Adam Oates, all these guys. This is the player name. So the, the one thing I want to take a look at is the actual type of data as it's been imported. And the first thing I'll point out is R does not seem to always make ideal decisions. This is not uh, just R. All software does this, is imperfect in this way. That it, It's loading up a variable, a name variable, for example, and it's assuming it's a factor. And the truth is a name really isn't a factor. It's not really a factor variable at all. Names are, rather than being factors, they really should be strings. They should, because they don't really contain data, typically. A name, especially a person's name, it's not really a data thing. It's nominal. It has... Uh, the value is 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 not really quantifiable in the same way a categorical variable might be or a factor variable might be. So at some point in time we're going to have to change this data type and kind of thinking about that. But but I'll just go on to do a little bit of the early data processing and, and I want to show a few important string functions that are common to other software. This first one is the substring function. So. In this case, I seem to be able to use it, this function on a factor variable. Sub substring seems to work in a factor variable. So this NHL player variable in the NHL data frame is a factor, but I can use the string function on it, apparently. L well, let's see. Let's see if that's true. Yeah. So what does this function do? Well, the, the first argument of the function is the string. The second argument is the start and the end, third argument is the end. So the start means where we begin the substring. So in this case, it's the first character in this string. And this is where we end the first character of the string. So what this means is this little function creates a new variable in the NHL data frame that is the first letter of the name. And you can see it here, the first letter of the name. That's handy. Now I actually want to convert this into a character function because when we start to work in this a little bit more, we'll find that it doesn't work. The next function I want to use won't work on a factor variable. So, so here I'm just going to force the player variable into character, into character format, and you can see that that worked here. So that's easy enough. And then the next thing I want to do is extract the last character of a string. In this case, it's a, there's an extra step. There's a lot of ways you can do this, but this this is one way. So the I'm going to create a last character or, or a last letter variable. I use a substring, substring function again. The first argument is the same. It's the name of the variable. 
The second argument is the length or the number of characters in that string. So if the name is 13 characters long, it's the number 13. And the third argument is the same. So it's basically going to the end of the, the string and it's giving me the last letter. It's the same kind of thing as the, in, the, in the first letter, extracting the first letter, except instead of one and one being the arguments, it's the length of the string. Not that useful. Uh, but let's go on to the next function I want to show you. These are this is this reg regular expression function. Regular expressions are really powerful for text processing. There's a, they're also very tricky, so you have to learn a lot about them to fully exploit their value. But I'll just show you one little function here. And this one here is a regular expression that search for searches for a string in a string. So it's going to search for the letter Z or the the yeah the letter Z in this player name string. And I've not assigned it to a variable name because I just want to show you what it looks like. If we run this, it's going to give us a negative one if that character's not found. So for most most players do not have a Z in their name. But it's going to give me the location of it, the location of this letter if it is found in the name. And the first name in the list is Wayne Gresky, and he's got a Z in the 11th character of his name. Okay. Now I want to continue using these functions for something a little bit more useful. Let's say I want to subset a data set based on some text in some text within strings. So here's the here the task is let's say I want to extract all the Johns, all the players with the word John in their name. So this could be first name or last name. So they could have the name Johnson or the name John, whatever. So what do I do? Well, okay, so the, I'm going to use the which function. So on the, I've got a comma here. So I'm, this is going to be row-based operations. It's all on the left-hand side of the column, which makes sense because I'm I'm really extracting the data based on information, with contained within a single variable, the player variable. And I'm using regular expression, except instead of just looking for a single letter, I'm looking for a name. So I put the name in the first argument of that regular expression, and the second argument I'm putting the word player. I'm putting the player variable, but I use this to lower function, so it's nested within this to lower function. The to lower function turns every character into lowercase. I have to do this because of the inconsistencies in upper and lowercase spelling um, of a name. Some people that it might be capital J sometimes, it might not be other times if it's nested within a word. So by standardizing it using this function. I will capture every instances of J O H N, whatever the case. So whether it's upper or lower case. So kind of in this case it might not have been necessary, but often that is. So I often will turn a string into either upper or lower case and make a comparison just on that, assuming that the case doesn't vary. Okay. So here this first thing says I'm going to say um, the regular expression is going to give me a number. N not equal to negative one if the word John is in the name. So I use which to say, it, give me any record in which it's this regular expression output is not equal to one. So in other words, if the name John exists. So if I run this now, it should give me a new data set with all the people with the name John. As it turns out, they're all in their first name. So there's no nobody has a last name with John in it in the NHL in 1990, apparently. Okay, so that's nice. Now I can now I can use this some of this these little tools here to actually uh, create a last name variable. So now let's say I only want the last names of these players. Well, I can use a combination of the substring function and the regular expression function to pull out the last names. How do I do it? Well, the outer nesting function is substring. The first argument is the player name. The second argument is a regular expression call that's, that looks for a space because the way the names are written is there's a space typically between the first and last name. So it's going to tell me where the space is and that's where it's going to start looking for the name. So this is the starting point of the substring function. It's going to be where the space is, which makes sense. The space is where, just look at it, the space is where that last name will begin, right? Everything to the right of that will be the last name. So that's the start. And then the end is simply the length of the string. So if I run this, it's going to create a new variable here. Whoops, wrong one. It's going to create a new variable in the NHL data set. If we just scroll across here, 
which is the last name. Let's say I do the same thing for the first name. The reasoning is reversed here. So the, the first argument is going to be 1. So I'm going to start the word search. And the second argument, or the, sorry, the second argument is going to be 1. The first argument is, of course, the name of the string. Second argument is 1, starting at the beginning of the string, and then ending where there's a space. I run this function, and whammo, I have the first names in a variable as well. Look at that. Now, what do I want to do with this? Well, let's say I want to create a word cloud out of names. I want to find out what are the names that NHL players had back in the 1990s. So let's take, let's continue. We'll do, take a, I'll show you through a few steps here. So I've now got all the names in this file, all the NHL first names here. So I'm going to create a variable, and that's going to be this count variable, just one. It's every record will be equal to one. The, the variable count will be equal to one for every record. And then I aggregate on that variable to create this aggregate data set, and then I rename it. So I'm going to create a new data set aggregated. So it's counting the number of instances of each name. So you've got Aaron. There's one Aaron in the NHL, three Adams, two Allens, one Alexander, and so on. One Elfie. Elfie. I don't remember an Elfie in the NHL back in 1990. Probably Swedish or something. Okay. So, so we've got this, we've created this new variable. Or sorry, we've created this data set, this aggregated data set. Now, the, the last step is the actual making of the word cloud. And this word cloud function, there's a lot of little parameters to worry about setting, but all we're going to be concerned with here right now are these, these th four here. Actually, I guess we can talk about all these five. The last few parameters have to do with the appearance of it. But I'll just talk about the first few arguments in the function here. Okay. So the first argument is the name of the data set. Uh, sorry, the first argument is the name of the data file that we're going to be rendering, or the, 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 the variable we're going to be rendering. So we're going to be putting names on this word cloud. This is where we specify what it is that we're actually going to be putting onto the word cloud. And it's going to be name. That's what we named the names in this aggregated data set. Frequency is going to be the count of those names. So that what's the number, which will ultimately influence the size of the names in the in the word cloud. Minimum frequency says, what is the minimum value of this variable that uh, that's required in order to print it? So any name that only occurred once is not going to be printed. This is looking only at the more common names in the NHL. Maximum words, this is puts a limit on the top 100 names. And then random order has to do with how they're, how it's actually rendered visually. I believe if you were to put this f by putting, you get a different look of the graph using this. So actually, these arguments all have to do with the appearance. So I'm just going to run this now, just run this function so you can see it. And we get this nice little word cloud, which tells us, look at that. A lot of mics back in 1990. Dave's, if you put Dave and David together, probably had even more. Um, obviously, that would require some more da data processing where you started to substring out names to find common elements like Dave and David maybe should be put into the same group, Steve and Steven, and so on. Anyway, that's all I had to show today. Thank you.